Does it seem like some people glide effortlessly through life, achieving success in their careers, their relationships, and even in their health, while you're stuck grinding, feeling like nothing you do ever works? Well, I'm here to tell you it's not about luck, secret connections, or even privilege. It all comes down to four fundamental factors that shape your reality. And the great news is, no matter who you are or where you come from, what you've been through, or what you hope to achieve, you can master these four factors and transform your life. We've already uncovered the power of factor number three, your beliefs and emotions. If you haven't seen that video, click somewhere here and watch it before continuing. And now, on to the grand finale. Factor number four, your identity. Your identity isn't just your name or your appearance. It's your self-concept, your value system, your beliefs about your capabilities and your place in the world. It's the invisible force that shapes your destiny. I'm 5'2". Using myself as an example, it's the difference between me being short, which is just a fact, and me either believing that being short is a challenge or an asset. The first is a physical trait that can't be changed, but my value as a person is completely dependent on me. Your identity isn't who you pretend to be in front of others. It's who you are when you're standing alone and challenged by adversity. Adversity always reveals how you truly see yourself. Things will always happen that are outside of our control, but they can't be blamed for our results because it's how we react that shapes our results. And our reactions are completely within our control. And your identity dictates how you react. Your identity is literally the architect of your life. Let's say you're an actor and you identify yourself as a good actor or a great actor with skills and experience that enrich the lives of others. A film you worked on gets reviewed and you're criticized for a poor performance. Because that criticism doesn't resonate with your identity, you blow it off. That's just one person's opinion and in your mind, it isn't even true. The bad review won't affect your confidence and it won't stop you from seeking new roles. It won't stop you from doing everything that a great actor would. The outcome is that you'll continue to work, enjoying new opportunities and praise from audiences and critics alike. Because you're able to keep going, your career keeps growing. This is exactly what happened to Robert Downey Jr. But if you see yourself as a bad actor, undeserving of praise or recognition, that bad review sticks with you because you feel like you've been exposed as the fraud you are. You're too embarrassed to audition and you avoid new opportunities. Or you walk around with a chip on your shoulder and such a bad vibe that no one wants to work with you. The outcome is that you eventually stop working, ending your career. The first step to changing your identity is understanding when and how it was formed. Your identity was formed in childhood and it came from the adults around you. Children are vulnerable. To survive, they need more than food, shelter, and water. They also need to be loved, connected, significant, and safe. When they're old enough to go to school, three more needs develop. The need to be seen and heard, the need to be celebrated, and the need to have someone be proud of them. When these needs are met, the child develops an identity that helps them thrive in the world. They act and overcome adversity with confidence. But when one or more of these needs aren't met, it creates a void in their personality that's filled with anger, fear, and confusion. They develop the identity of not being enough, of not being worthy, and of being unlucky. That identity grows with them into adulthood. And because they don't believe their actions will produce the results they seek, they're unwilling to take the necessary steps to create the life that they'd prefer. If their needs are fulfilled only under certain conditions, in other words, through manipulation, then they'll develop an identity that their value is only based on how well they can please others. I once met a man, let's call him Joe, whose father left the family when he was very young, too young to remember his father or to give the event any real meaning. But he had three older brothers and the eldest became the man of the house. Joe's brother resented being thrust into this role and constantly criticized their father. Joe depended on his oldest brother, and so his brother's resentment had to become his own. He's now a middle-aged man who can't make peace with his elderly father and becomes outraged if it's brought up. But when he speaks about his brother, he immediately softens up and praises him. It's obvious that Joe's resentment is an act of loyalty toward his brother, because if he hadn't shared his brother's anger when he was a child, then his needs wouldn't have been met. 
Sadly, Joel's never been able to shake that identity and it lives within him to this day. Take time to dig deep and ask yourself what formed the identity you have today. Slowly realize that you're no longer a child and you're free to choose the type of person you'd rather be. I've left a link to a free PDF transcript of this video in the description box below to help. The second step to changing your identity is understanding that it isn't permanent and that you can change it at any time. Psychologists will tell you that it takes years to overcome a negative identity, if it can be achieved at all. But that's just not true. Let me explain. Quantum mechanics formulated the many worlds theory, the pilot wave theory, and the string theory, which state that a wave function splits every time a quantum interaction takes place, creating infinitely subtly different worlds all the time. Based on these theories, every decision you've ever made has created alternative versions of you. The you that went to college and became a surgeon, and the you that didn't and became a janitor. The you that took that trip and found the love of your life. The you that didn't and found your calling. All of these versions exist at the same time, just as thousands of different programs can run through the same television. If you're watching a program on TV that bores you, you change the channel, right? You don't waste time getting angry at the TV or blaming the station. You just move on. In the same way, if you're watching a version of your life that you don't like, you can simply change the channel. How? Number one, envision the life that you prefer. Who are you? How do you think and feel about yourself and life in general? How do you show up in the world? What do you do and who are the people around you? Where do you live and how? Notice every detail, including your character traits, the daily choices you make, your personal boundaries, how you carry yourself, and how you treat others. Notice how this version of you reacts to situations and challenges. Then, number two, take on those character traits right now. Make those decisions today. You don't need validation to do this. You don't need anyone's approval. You don't need to be forgiven and you don't have to earn the right to do it in any way. Just do it and stay consistent. Because energies match and actions produce results, the reality you experience around you will change. It has to, that's just physics. Some people try to change their lives by changing their actions, but as we've already discussed, that strategy doesn't work when the beliefs and emotions caused by your identity remain the same. Just think about how many people win the lottery then lose it all just a few years later, or how many go through painful weight loss surgeries only to gain it all back. Why does this happen? Is it because money can't buy happiness or because surgeries don't work? No, it's because while their environment changed, their identity didn't. If they've always seen themselves as a victim or an underdog, as someone unworthy and undeserving of a better life, then they're running on the same beliefs which elicit the same emotions that drive the same actions and produce the same results. At the end of the day, we always default to our identity. The third step to changing your identity is understanding your motivation behind it. Believe it or not, sometimes we hold on to negative identities because they offer us a hidden payoff. Maybe it's attention, sympathy, or an excuse to avoid responsibility. But these payoffs come at a very high cost. Your happiness, fulfillment, and potential. For example, let's say you consider yourself to be a sickly person, or an addict, or stupid. What could possibly be the benefit of these identities? Well, I can think of a few. Number one, you get attention from your loved ones. Number two, you aren't expected to fulfill certain duties, so someone else takes care of them for you. And number three, you're excused from events and situations that you'd rather avoid without question. Guilt is another reason why some people refuse to change. They've done something they're not proud of and think that the only way that they can make up for it is by being miserable for the rest of their lives. Sometimes the guilt is genuine, but other times it's manipulative and a way to victimize themselves in order to avoid the judgment of others. Some people think that if they live in misery for what they've done forever, then no one else will bring it up or hold them accountable for it. If guilt is what's holding you back, question your motivation. While remorse is healthy when we've done something wrong, a lifetime of misery isn't going to change what happened. What's done is done. You're not perfect and making amends in a constructive way that's beneficial to others is a lot more meaningful than wasting your life wallowing in guilt, which serves no one. 
Every negative identity has a payoff, and if you're honest, you'll uncover and confront it. It'll take humility, effort, and consistency, but it'll free you from the burdens that are weighing you down right now and improve the quality of your life. Your identity is self-fulfilling. It creates the very situations that confirm it. Your mind then accepts these situations as proof of your identity through confirmation bias, when in reality, it works the other way around. When you accept that you created these situations through your actions and reactions, then you realize that they can be changed. If this notion fills you with hope and purpose, you've already overcome the biggest hurdle toward creating the life that you desire, your ego. If it produces anger, cynicism, and frustration in you, then that's a sure sign that you're fearful of confronting your past and of change. To understand why, go back to factor number one and the first video in this series, which you can watch by clicking somewhere here. It's time to break free from the chains of your past by challenging your beliefs, embracing your emotions, and rewriting your identity story. You harness the power to create the life that you desire. It all starts with embracing the incredible power of your identity. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey of self-discovery. I hope it helped. I'm excited to see the amazing things you'll achieve. If you did find this video series helpful, smash that like button and share it with a friend who needs to hear it. Leave a comment and share your journey with us. Love you guys. See you in the next vid.